Martin, and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Marquise Jenkins, and I'm here today with the Residents to Preserve Public Housing and the Citywide Council of Presidents. We are here today to send a message. Today you're going to hear from speakers who are going to reaffirm that, one, we reject the Public Housing Preservation Trust. Two, we reject the ongoing RAD and PAC plan. Three, we demand our local elected officials to privatize public funds for public housing. Four, we demand a forensic audit and resident accountability. Five, we demand public housing is a citywide issue and the solutions of the city's affordable housing homeless crisis. Today we have a clear message. Our elected officials are standing with us to make it clear that the city and the state has a responsibility. We cannot allow the private sector to come and run public housing. The private sector has one goal, and that is to make interest. We need to put the people first, people over profit. Yeah. Yeah. People over profit. 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 in the City Council and Chair of the City Council's Public Housing Committee, Alexa Aviles. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. How are we today? Good. 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 It's a good day to protect public housing, that's for sure. So my name is Alexa Aviles. I am the City Council member representing District 38 in South Brooklyn. I'm also the Chair of the Public Housing Committee. And I'm standing here in solidarity with these residents, with the CCOP, because many of our questions have yet to be answered. And we have been asking for questions and services for decades. And what we are getting is wholly, wholly inadequate. There are several bills moving in Albany right now. Among them, the NYCHA Utility Accountability Act, requiring NYCHA to maintain open database of code violations, this is a good thing, we need to track some more. But there is also the trust bill, which we know is on its second or third, some may argue a fifth iteration, because we know that these bills continue to get recycled over the decades to privatize NYCHA and take it out of the public domain. So we must acknowledge, yes, there have been revisions to this bill. Yes, there have been some improvements. But a lot still remains to be seen. I have indeed read the legislation line for line. It is not fun, I will tell you that. Legislation is the most boring thing you could ever read in the planet. But I will tell you there are some significant gaps that I am deeply, deeply concerned about. This notion that residents will be engaged is a fallacy in the legislation. What it says is the legislation will consider a voting process to be determined. A big question mark. What it says is that the residents will get to decide whether to opt in or opt out after the fact. I asked NYCHA and my colleagues, if you cared about resident engagement, you would have asked that question, you would have funded the pursuit of that question with rigor prior to putting legislation on the table prior to backing residents' backs against the wall who are facing dire conditions. If we really cared about NYCHA and its residents, we would wholly invest in the institution. We would ensure accountability in the institution. What we see in this executive budget, and we will have a, a, a budget hearing in about 45 minutes, is that our city is allocating, yes, our city is generous in investing, but I am sorry, we are in a crisis. These are New York City residents. 
we should be investing in it and to match the urgency of the crisis. But what that budget shows is that there is no new capital money for anything besides rad and pact, for nothing besides no privatization. So we are fine as a city to commit $1.2 billion over five years, which means maybe $500 million solely for private management not to protect the public good, the public houses, and the residents. What happens to those 110,000 residents that are outside of what is being allocated for RAD impact? What happens to them? Do we say, well, we give them no options? So there are so many questions to be answered here. The legislation is not full. It does not engage all the appointees in that legislation are effectively mayoral appointees. That is not resident voice, that's mayor voice. We want real resident voice. Okay, we don't need the mayor or the NYCHA president to appoint the resident members. Residents should be appointing the resident right. members. They don't need, they need somebody to tell them what to do. People over profit. So in closing, we have many questions that have yet to be answered. We demand accountability. And I continue to say, this is, NYCHA is the city's greatest public asset. It is housing for the public good. We need public dollars to back the public housing, to make sure that we protect our residents. Everybody's gonna tell you, exactly, no stadiums, no corporations, no, no giving our money to corporations to make money. That's right, we don't want that. We want our public dollars to back public housing. And so with that, I stand in solidarity with the residents. This is a controversial issue, but you know what? We have been putting forward, the residents have been putting forward clear signals, clear information, clear solutions for decades. It is time for real resident engagement and resident-led power. Thank you. We got a lot of politicians, just to be quite frank and blunt with you, who are selling us out. But we have some champions here with us today. And we can't focus. We can't focus on the ones who are selling us out because I believe the voices here are louder. City, state, and NYCHA officials have consistently blamed the issues in public housing on divestment and lacking federal funds. But city and state officials have consistently cut NYCHA budget leading to worsening maintenance and repair issues. If our local elected officials refuse to adequately fund NYCHA, how can we expect that, the, that from the federal government, privatization plans like the Trust and RAD are responding to disinvestment with divestment? We demand a fully funded NYCHA with public investment from city and state. Mayor Eric Adams' executive budget allocates $1.2 billion for capital repairs and pack conversions. That's not right. That ain't right. That's not right. We demand, we demand those funds be immediately redirected to NYCHA for capital repairs and operating expenses. Again, we are not going to pay attention and be distracted by those other elected officials. We got some champions here with us today, so let's hear from another one of our champions. Please join me in welcoming Councilman Chris Monte to the mic. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank everyone for being here. I know everyone here is a working class person that had to take time out of work to protect where they live, to protect the homes of their neighbors, to protect the homes of their community, and to protect people like them all across the city. So today I say thank you for standing up, for being here, and for doing the right thing. We're here because it's, we have to represent people over profit. I never understand why the city and state always wants to invest billions of dollars in new programs when they can't fix and fund the programs that are working and that exist today, like public housing. That's right. That's right. That's right. Why are we going to continue to weaken our power as a city, weaken our power as a people, and allow corporate welfare to take over our homes? 
when we see studies and research from human rights organizations saying that PAC conversions that had happened already, privatization that has happened already, is against human rights. And the conditions that our people are living in now in those privatized homes are worse than what people are living here in public housing. That ain't right. That ain't right. That's a case study, but that's also a warning sign. Yes. That's the biggest red flag. If we see that it's not working, why are we going to continue to do so? That's what's been wrong with government for decades. And I'm glad to be here, not only with residents, but tenants leader like Kaitsu, who should be the next chair of NYCHA. But also the chair of public housing, my fellow council member, Alexa Vilas, because she understands what's at stake. She represents public housing that's been underinvested. We, she represents public housing that's been affected by Superstorm Sandy, and still we're still waiting for those repairs. And we're still waiting for the true community engagement to be part of that process. And so you have leaders in this fight. I know a lot of other colleagues that couldn't be here today that will be on the hearing fighting for you, but we got to make sure that we show up and we got to make sure that we're in that hearing because typically what happens is NYCHA will say, this is everything that's wrong, and that's, this is the only way that's going to fix it. But we all know that's a lie. That's a lie. And so we're here to call them out on their lie and to fight for the people. Thank you so Amen. much. Thank you. Thank you. It's our hope we need our money now. Hey, they owe us a check. We came to collect. They owe us a check. We came to collect. NYCHA says they have a $40 billion deficit. And we don't know how true that is. Because what we do know is that NYCHA's problem isn't solely financial. It's mismanagement. They have squandered $40 billion over the years. And now they say, we need to do this plan. They say, we need to bring the private market in because we're not getting the money from the federal government. And yet, our mayor turns around and throws another $1.2 billion at the private market. Nefarious. Now, we have talked to many of our elected officials, and they have told us that we are going to do whatever it is that the residents say we should do. So today, we are standing with NYCHA's citywide council of presidents, the officially elected body to represent all residents in the city. We are talking about 176,000 families that are going to be impacted by this plan. So you want to hear what the residents have to say? Let's yeah. hear from our very own CCAP member and tenant association president from Smith Houses, Aita Torres. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Let them have it. So I, I'm here to demand, you know, people forget that residents in public housing are taxpayers. A lot of us have family members who are veterans who have died. We are responsible citizens. We pay taxes, unlike some people that have been president in the United States. And so I'm not asking, I'm demanding. And as a CCOP member, alongside another CCOP member, we're here to tell you that we are against the trust. The 964, which is the regulation under Section 9, that our people, Bible, our Bible and our regulations says we're supposed to be part of the process from conception. At no time, we now have two people running NYCHA who are out of towners. The chair, who only spends maybe three or four days a week and goes back to his own town. The CEO also. And so now we have people who have no concept, don't know our community running a system that holds 170,000 families. My God. My God. And so, my minister's here because I have asked for prayer um, every Sunday. We are human. We are human beings. We have families. We have paid our dues. And God knows that we will be homeless if this trust goes through.
because that's what they're doing. And so we're going to stand firm and we're going to continue to ask everybody, call your assemblyman, call your state senator and tell them no. And call the governor who put zero budget in the for us. That's right. We pay taxes. We're not here for free. We've paid our dues. We're responsible citizens. And my God, we are human beings. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yes. Yes. And while we were fighting for funding from the state budget, the Housing Authority was pushing the Preservation Trust. We demanded $6.2 billion from the state. And in response, the governor and her executive budget only allocated three, zero dollars, as Aitza said. But our champions in the assembly pushed and pushed, and they were able to secure $350 million, pennies. Penny for what we really need. And to make matters worse, the state passes a bill that allocates $600 million, almost double what they gave the public housing, to a billionaire who owns a football stadium. Ooh. That ain't right. No, it's not right. And to make matters worse, our governor gets on the front stage and boasts about having a $10 billion surplus. That ain't a surplus. That's our money. That is an unwillingness to fund the people who need it. We are one, one in every 15 residents in this city. Vote local out! Amen. Vote local out! So let's hear some more from CCOP. We have another CCOP member all the way from Staten Island because all five barrels matter. That's yes. right. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. short and to the point. We are human beings. Yep. We have the right to live and be treated respectfully and fairly. If you can build a stadium and not be concerned about that senior citizen, that baby, that person who has physical disabled issues day in and day out, but you're worried about building a stadium, I don't need you representing me. I need you to recognize that we, the people, we may seem like a small group, but trust and believe the power of God is here. Yes. yes. Okay? The power of God is here. You're not going to take your stadium with you. You're not going to take your boats with you. We, we are tired of paying for the criminals right. yeah. that are supposedly representing us. We, the public housing residents, are included when we are taken care of. Let's go with the latest one. That would be a good one. Benjamin. We'll still be taking care of him as well. Okay? So let's treat public housing residents, and let's stop saying public housing residents. People who need a place to live. People who need a place to live. So this is my question. Can I live with you? Can I get about 20 families to join me so that we can get a house somewhere in Minneapolis, Minnesota, or next door to the governor, and then we can sit down and have a fish fry? Because you won't let me stay where I'm at. I'm not bothering you. I'm trying to live. The money that you're wasting, you can put it and invest it into our homes. Why do we have to live like criminals? Why do we have to live like slop? We are not. We are human beings, so do the right thing. Because at the end of the day, God's going to get you. Amen. God's going to get you. God is going to get you, too. Amen. Amen. People over profit! People over profit! People over profit! So we were disappointed on May 11th when the assembly, the assembly's committee on housing decided to advance the public housing preservation trust. 
We were very disappointed. Now the legislation is in the Rules Committee. And that Rules Committee is chaired by the Speaker of the Assembly, Carl Hastings. Among the elected officials who say they are going to let the residents decide, that was his quote, he would let the residents decide. So today, we have an RPPH steering committee member and resident who lives in Carl Hastings District, and he has something to say to Carl Hastings. So please give a warm welcome to Mr. Robert Hall. Thank you. This is a very, very carnage issue as far as housing is concerned. We have 964 regulations that we're supposed to abide under. Why is it nobody listens to the laws of the 964 regs? This is our Bible. Nobody wants to hear that. We have two individuals that represent NYCHA. They're here to privatize the developments. What kind of representation do we have? Why would you allow this? We're trying to get a better seat at the table, and we can't ascertain it because you're concerned with privatization. And at no time has anyone been told how much money they've already acquired by privatizing what they have to this moment. Nobody. I asked that question last Thursday at the resident advisory board meeting. They got to get back to me. They always got to get back to me. Now, they're statisticians, but one thing they don't believe in, or they do believe in, is man's inhumanity to mankind. And that's what's going on here. I'm a second generation TA president. My mother was a president. I know all about this inside out, right side in. This is wrong. This is wrong. Now, what we need to do, this carnage has to stop. And it's coming from every direction. I spoke to Speaker Hasty, and he leaves it up to the presidents to represent their development. And I respect that. I really do. But I'm, I'm, I, I'm on the ground trying to educate the residents because this took place during the pandemic. People are looking in the paper, they're seeing a brand new apartment, and they say, why not? Because they don't know what's in this fine print. That's what's going on now. So now you got to educate them on the facts. Go backwards to go forwards. It's carnage. It's so bad. At the meeting yesterday, I found out that my congressman is no, no longer my congressman because of the redistricting. Uh -huh. But God has blessed me because my new congressman is Richie Torres. All right. So, you want to fight? We're going to fight. All right? We're going to fight. But the fact of the matter is, we are 400,000 strong. Do you understand? All right? What are you going to do with no income if you get rid of what you have? NYCHA was acquired in 1934. It was not to be disillusioned. It's to help people get on their feet so they can progress. It is very important that we keep public housing public. Thank you. We have to live in these buildings 24 7. But we are not the only ones that's walking around and moving these buildings. The conditions of these buildings also impact the people who work there. And what does it mean for the unions and the workers if they are forced to decide if they want to move on to this transition, or even if they have the ability to cross over if this trust moves forward? So to hear a little bit more from the working side, I'd like to bring up one of our champions, Joshua. Please come press the mic. How's everybody doing? My name is Josh Barnett. I'm a union rep with Local 375, DC 37, and a full-time NYCHA employee. And as a third-generation New Yorker and a city worker, because we keep the city running, every time we come here, just from the steps, we can see one more luxury tower, right, that has apartments that we could never dream of living in that was built with public subsidy. 
that was built with tax cut, that was built with tax subsidies, that was built with outright corporate welfare. There's always money for that, but there's not money for housing as a human right. They tell us that they're privatizing prisons, but there's no money. We're six blocks north of Wall Street. Wall Street is recording record profits, but their taxes are at record lows. And meanwhile, there's nothing in the city budget, but $1.2 billion is going to a RAD program that's supposed to take it off the public payroll, and now it's being reversed. We're throwing money at the people that are supposed to be saving us money. And as a worker, as a NYCHA worker, we can see that one of the reasons that the buildings are deteriorated is because there have been severe cutbacks in staff. When I started working at NYCHA in 99, there were 16,000 workers. There's 12,000 now, and, that, and the, the workers are working with a skeleton crew, but the consultants are crawling all over the place. That there's money for. For outsourcing work, that there's money for. For giving money to private contractors, that there's money for, but NYCHA never tells you how much because they're famous for keeping two sets of books, right? One they open to the public and one where the money really goes. And what's really scary about RAD and PAC from the workers' point of view, from the taxpayers' point of view, and from the residents' point of view is that we see a really union-busting act going on here. Mm -hmm. The fact is that if this goes through, these private contractors don't have to obey civil service, they don't have to obey Union contracts, and in the PAC language, there's this really very vague and confusing language that night that the head of, of the trust and the mayor has the option, if they want to, of following negotiating contracts. No, you don't give the boss the option of whether he negotiates with you. Workers fought too long to have these kinds of protections. And given the way workers are being squeezed around the country, this is one more example of the race to the bottom, making sure that working people have no wages, no job security, and it really impacts resident hiring. If we need people to do the work, there are so many residents ready, willing, and able to step up if NYCHA put them on the payroll, but they don't, because there's too many sweetheart contracts going to their friends. And so the bottom line is, from the workers' point of view, from the city's point of view, we're all reeling from gentrification. From the residents' point of view, this is one fight. We don't want to preserve public housing. We want to expand public housing. We need a lot more of it. We need a lot more of it now. Don't tell us the money is not there. Forget the privatization. A full moratorium, a full audit, and make sure all new hires pay, pay work is what it takes to live in this city. And let's keep the struggle going. So let's do the math. NYCHA says we have a $40 billion deficit. When they first introduced the blueprint, they're trying to get away from the blueprint, they just want to talk about trust. But the blueprint and the trust are two different things, right? The, the trust is a part of the blueprint. So when they introduced this plan, they said it was a 10-year plan. So let's do the math. $40 billion divided by 10. That's $4 billion. So are you telling me between the federal government, between the state and the city, we can't get $4 billion a year? <laughs> but our mayor could, instead of giving us that $1.2 billion, he's going to give it to the private company. So we... are going to get a profit off of that. That's right. We came... trying to use our, our rooftops to do it, to preserve it in our other city. That's right. So what's good with that? Why can't we live? That's can right. we live? Yeah. Let's go to his Can house. Can we live? That's what I'm saying. We have. Oh, yeah. That's, that's right. right. We need it now. That's right. And, and, and just, and just answer one question for me. Step. Years ago, the federal I government, we, we had the start taking care of our own city and state buildings. When they became city and state buildings, they said, no, we're not going to give you that. 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 we Thank you. Thank you. What I want to say is that we have some allies here, some strong allies. We are growing every single day that people are recognizing the dangers in this plan. One of our strongest allies on the ground and in the community every single day getting petitions to hold our mayor accountable. Seeker. Yes. And to represent Seeker today, uh -huh. we have the most powerful, uh -huh. the most dynamic, uh -huh. 
Do not mess with her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Brenda Temple. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that was a wonderful introduction. Uh, I'm not worthy. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, Good afternoon, everyone. Greetings to all. My name is Brenda Temple. I am a resident of Oceanside Houses of Far Rockaway, Queens. Oceanside Houses is one of 250 public housing developments in New York City, owned and operated by New York City Housing Authority, NYCHA. I am an activist and work with the Committee for Independent Community Action. We are here to support CCOP and RPPH to stop the trust, also known as the Blueprint. I and the committee are leading a New York City-wide petition campaign to demand that Eric Adams stop all of the privatization of public housing and support the residents to manage their housing developments. New York City and NYCHA have let the conditions of our homes, homes to over 600,000 New Yorkers, decay, rot, poison our people. Someone is hurting our people. Someone is hurting our people. We are here today to tell our elected officials to stop the blueprint and the trust. NYCHA and the City of New York have been implementing RAD and PACT to turn management of public housing over to private developers who will make money on our backs, a lot of money, using government-guaranteed financial vouchers. Privatization of public housing ends public housing and NYCHA won't provide the oversight we residents need for the developers. You know that. Section 9 offers federal protections to residents that developed run projects Section 8 won't. You know that. Privatization is nothing less than a vicious attack on the poor with shoddy repairs, increased rents, evictions, and displacement. And you know that. And the trust will privatize the remaining 110,000 public housing apartments. That will end public housing in New York City as we know it. That's right. If this goes through, there will be no more public housing. And that ain't right. That the ain't silence right. of our elected officials in New York City is deafening. Where is their political will? You say there is no money. Of course there is no money when you are silent and when you won't fight on our behalf, your constituents, that is 7% of New Yorkers who live in public housing. Where are your priorities? Without us, the hardworking, low-income, essential workers that have always been essential, this country will be doomed. We are those that clean your grandparents' bed sores, take care of your children. We clean. We cook. We, uh, we teach, we protect, we transport. We make it possible for this city to run. We have always been essential, and we deserve having housing that is stable and with a quality of life. We demand decent housing, public housing, public Section 9 housing. We residents want to manage our own homes, elected officials, Stop the trust. And I want to thank Dr. Lenore Filani and people like Fannie Lou Hamer hey. for giving us the voice that we need to make this happen. Thank you. People of a profit. People of a profit. People of a profit. People of a profit. Fun nights are now. Fun nights are now. Fun nights are now. Fun nights are now. Nice nights lives matter. Nice lives matter. That's right. I just heard some interesting news. As we are out here on the steps, raising attention to all the corrupt, all the ignoring of the residents' voices, instead of standing with us here today, 
and calling attention to this plan, our mayor is holding a counter protest, a counter press conference, a counter press conference right now, reaching out to us is to ask them to stand with us. But I said it earlier, our voice is louder. They have brought this to us in 2019. And we organized, we mobilized, and we testified, and we flagged that legislation. They came back again in 2021 to pass this legislation, and we mobilized, we organized, we testified, and we blocked the legislation. And then, and then they tried to push it through the state budget. And guess what we did? We organized, we mobilized, we testified, and we blocked it. You think they heard us? So here they are, trying to pass this legislation again before June 3rd. And guess what we are going to do? We're going to mobilize, we're going to organize, and we're going to testify and make sure we stop this. And the other thing, the other thing that's on our side, you heard it by many of our guest speakers, we got God on our side. Yes, that's right. right. That's right. And yes. we got one of his representatives here with us today, Dr. Reverend Samuels. Please welcome him to the stage. Please. Good afternoon. I'm here, and I'm actually surprised that the lie that privatization of public housing is good for public housing when we know that privatization of public housing equals displacement, homelessness, and human suffering. We have a crisis of homelessness in our city and throughout this nation. For people to be advocating for more homelessness is beyond what I can believe. And I'm here because I want to say that I believe that God is a God that stands with the marginalized, with the poor, with the suffering, and we as a church want to be here also. And I hope and pray that we will be successful in this endeavor, fighting against the evil, immoral, and I would say diabolical process that's taking place. I can't even imagine that the mayor is participating in a counter uh, press conference against this. That's evil. It's immoral. It also shows us, it also shows us j that just because people look like us, they don't represent us. So we beware. Beware of the snakes among us. Oh, yeah. Take Hello. care. Oh, yes. Hello. Amen. 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 We are the employers. We employ all of them. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Taking care of all my people. We're coming close to an end. But it is time. It is time to hear some more plea from residents. Because that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, Everybody wants to make choices. Everybody want to make choices because they think we are ignorant. They think we don't know what the real goal is here. Our public housing residents see what's happening all around their neighborhood. When they go to the store and the prices go up, when they look at the product and it doesn't reflect what they used to buy at the store, Everything is going up around us, and we got waterfront property. Mm -hmm. We got property that's next to transit. We got property that's next to shopping areas. We know, we know that if this governor can put three six hundred million towards a football stadium, there is money for public housing. That's not right. Not right. But some of the arguments or some of the pushbacks that some of our elected officials say. We don't want to give NYCHA any money because they mishandle money. They don't never spend the money. We learned from the city council hearing recently that NYCHA spent 6% of the funding, the capital funding that was allocated by the city, only 6%. Where's our money? Where's our money? Where's our money? So what we are asking for is we are asking for a comprehensive forensic audit. If the Housing Authority has done a terrible job in managing public funds, government funds, do we really want to put them in charge of private debt? 
No. No way. But they don't care because that's, they get money off the land. They don't care about the builders. They get money off the land. That's right. They get a cut no matter what. That's right. They cut us out and they still survive. <laughs> Miss Kiko is fired up. We, we know what's going on here. And that's why we are fighting. It's not that we're holding out and waiting for some build back better. Yes, we need that money. But we also know that this plan is more riskier than what we have going on now. And we refuse to allow them to mortgage our property just so that they can generate profits for private lenders. Not on our watch. Not today. Not ever. And so to help to help drive this message home, because you need to hear from the residents. We got LaGuardia in the house. Yeah. Listen that. Come, come bless my son. Hello, everyone. Greetings, greetings. I just want to encourage you all to continue coming out here. I was one of the TA uh, leaders that people from the mayor's office called to come to the press conference that they're having today. I don't know all the details, but it has to do with supporting the public trust. The last time this trust was introduced, it was able to be beat back. And now because the builder back, the $40 billion in the, in the builder back is off the table, they feel they have a free and clear to proceed forward with the public trust. But the fact that you are here today and the fact that that came to the attention of the mayor and the fact that he saw the need to have a press conference of his own should convey to all of you that the fight is not yet over. Hey! Hey! These steps should have been flooded with people. But as we come out more and more and we let people know the opposition that's against us, we will encourage others to come forward and demand these elected officials to give what's needed and necessary, not just for repairs, but transparency must be in the equation. Mm -hmm. Because we know that NYCHA cannot be trusted to handle finances. We know that NYCHA cannot be trusted to tell the truth which is why we oppose the public trust and also RAD. I also wish that there would be some compensation for current, current residents living in dilapidated conditions today where people have died as a result of negligence and mismanagement. People who are ill have their conditions exacerbated due to the mold that's still in the house. So nature has shown total disregard, total abandonment for its tenants while proceeding forward for privatization purely for, for gain. So I just want to say to everybody, move forward, be encouraged, and keep saying, fully fun NYCHA. 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 Tenant Association President Champions, 
from all the way in the hall of from the Isaac Holmes. We wish you know what it is. Miss Sandra Colvin. Yeah. This entity was formed to help stop privatization, help residents get repairs and everything like that. I'm also the co-host and co-founder of the One Night Your Podcast. So One Night Your One People? One Night Your? One People. One Night Your? One People. So in 2015, as I was yelling up top, thank you for respecting my leadership because I was not on the program to speak, but I appreciate that. That's what you do. You honor those that have had their boots on the ground. In 2015, Enf uh, Enfield proposal came to Holmes Towers. We t it took four years and we fought that fight and we won. Yeah. 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 We stopped privatization. In 2015, excuse me, 2016 of January, I stood here, facilitated my very first press conference, and some of you all were here. You were here. We had council member at that time, Richie Torres. We had council member Ben Kalos. Okay, we had Dr. Lenora Falani with us. Okay, we were asking, as I said, for two billion to fund NYCHA. That was in 2015. Okay. Now we're at 40 billion. Yes. Let's understand the picture. Exactly. Understand what's going on. They have disinvested in us. Why? Because it's black and brown people. Majority of, of of us Talk living in public housing. Okay, <laughs> if if the white flight didn't exist, I'm being real. They, it wouldn't have been a problem because yep. housing was segregated. So let's talk about it. But we need the funding. Let's stop asking for this ten, these ten-year spans. We need the money now. Yeah. Yes, if you could fund a war, if you could send uh, funding over billions of dollars, you got billions of dollars to repair our homes. And so this has to stop. No this has to stop. So thank you for having me. No red, no pack. We're done with all these privatization schemes. Let's shut it down and fund NYCHA now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're coming. Two more speakers left. No to the trust. 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 Hope six. You know my hope six? Yeah, yeah. Petra, 1998. TRA, all of these Section 8 conversion and all of these deconcentrate poverty programs, we have lost hundreds of thousands of public housing all across the country. It seems like every year the Housing Authority comes up with a new plan. Y'all remember Next Generation? Uh, yep. Y'all yes. remember Enfield? Yep. Yes. How were those programs doing? Those programs were supposed to bring in 18 to $25 billion, and we haven't seen any of that. Our government was given, our housing authority was given permission to convert 62,000 units under the VADPAT program. We've seen them in the process of converting about 15,000 of those units thus far. You know what hasn't changed? The deficit. How is it that we have all of these developments being converted into Section 8, but we still got a $40 billion deficit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Numbers don't yeah. add up. Don't add up. Get your hands up, my brother. So to give you a little bit more of a historical context of what is going on, we got DSA in the house. Come on, bless the mic for me. <laughs> Speaking of $40 billion, Last week, it didn't take a week for the military-industrial complex lobbyists to bamboozle all of the congressional representatives and senators to give that money to the military-industrial complex. They say it's going to save people. I'll tell you who it's going to save. It's the military-industrial complex, and it's our money. That $40 billion has a ring. That money could be used for public housing. We have been saying for generations, money for people, not for war. Over the last two decades, $2 trillion went to make war in the Middle East. Who were the beneficiaries? It was the oil companies. It wasn't us. In fact, they took your money and our money, tax money, to try and control the world's oil supply. How about controlling decent housing for the people? We should say, money for housing, 
not for war. <laughs> Amen. Woo! And before, before I bring our last speaker up, I just want to remind you, we are here because one, we say absolutely no to the Public Housing Preservation Trust. Second, with all that we have learned from the current bad conversions, from the shabby work, the superficial bathtubs they're putting in, not repairing the inside of the walls, mass eviction, still mold going on in all of these bad developments. We are saying that we are against any more conversions into the Section 8 program. We are not. We are not going to allow our elected officials to cry broke and then feed the private market. So we are demanding, we are demanding that our elected officials fund public housing now. We are also, we are also demanding a comprehensive forensic audit. We need to make sure that we are tracking every single penny that comes in and every single penny that gets spent. <coughs> and finally, this is not a time. This is not a time to do radical things and end the public housing program when we have a huge housing crisis today. Public housing is the solution. We need to build more public housing. It is the only true source of low income housing. Save section nine. We need to invest. We need to expand. And we need to uplift and make sure that the residents are in power. So as the residents of public housing, we say it one more time before we bring our next speaker. They owe us a check. And we are allowed. native, first generation Dominican. Yes. Dominicans are black for the record. And I'm also an attorney yes. pending New York State admission to the bar. All right. wow. I've been representing and supporting NYCHA tenants for years. Right. Watching the neglect, watching the harassment, watching the overt racism. Some say it's neglect. I'd say it's racism. I say it's the fact that they prioritize profit over community. And countless people have talked about it here today, where they're funding wars, they're funding stadiums, they're funding corporations. And the bottom line is this, is that that is because they care about the pockets of the rich and not the community of the people. I am a former Section 8 tenant, and the biggest issue with the trust is the conversion from Section 9, which is public housing, to Section 8. Talk about it. They like to say that it's not privatization, that is financialization. <laughs> that we're going to be able to leverage municipal bonds to fund NYCHA. But who funds municipal bonds in this city? private equity. So who are we beholden to? It's a conversation that many people don't want to have, even amongst the left. But it's a serious conversation that needs to be had. Public housing is the number one source of decommodified housing in this country. NYCHA is the number one source of decommodified housing in this city. It is the biggest public housing entity in the damn world. And who do they hire? Gregory Russ. Hey, 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 So, Gregory Russ, if you look at his rap sheet, has gone around the nation to privatize 
to rat and pack public housing. And now he's getting paid $500,000 a year to do that in New York City. Not on our watch. How, do we, how about we cut his $500,000 and fund it to the night right. right. What the city, what the state, what the federal government chooses to invest in is a statement of their values. When they invest in a stadium, when they invest in wars, they invest in profiteering for the rich. But they need to invest in people. Nature is more than properties, y'all. It's not just buildings. You guys heard it and you've seen it. It's teachers, it's caretakers, it's workers, it's laborers, it's doctors, it's lawyers. They're all essential. Thank you for that. Without, without us, this city does not run. NYCHA is the vestige of affordable, deeply affordable housing in this city. Without NYCHA, gentrification is going to go tenfold in our city. So when we think about it, Gregory Russ, whose financial investments in terms of his family is deeply vested in Section 8 profitability, who do you think their interests are serving? Section 9 to Section 8, simply put, is privatization. You can call it financialization, it's privatization at the end of the day. So what we need to do is operate from abundance. They've got us from a position of scarcity. Save Section 9. Save public housing. We want to do more than just that. We want to expand it. Put the tenants to work to rebuild their communities. Put the tenants in positions of power to manage their properties. They live there. Resident management corporation. They live there. They understand their plight. They have the solutions. The people closest to the pain are the closest to the solutions. And they're here. And they're here. They see us. So now, you see why we don't trust the trust. They told us with Rad and Pact that they were going to renovate and repair NYCHA. <clears throat> you look at Ocean Bay houses out in Rockaway, Queens, which was converted through Rad and Pact. The highest eviction rate was in public housing right. in New York City. Mm. Amen. Wow. That ain't right. Isn't that the place where the, 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 the wall fell down? That ain't right. Isn't that the place where the wall fell down? Yep. Yeah. Those conversions. Isn't that the place where the wall fell down? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the place where the wall fell down? Yep. Oh. But it didn't fall down when it was nitro. But then it fell down after it was converted. Oh, okay. Talk Excuse about me. It. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's your space, Queen. <laughs> And that's the bottom line. These conversions are literally financial tools for the profitability of the rich. All right? So what we need to do is to fully fund NYCHA. Not one billion, not two billion, not three billion, not four, but forty billion dollars and the trust. And we want our elected officials to keep the spine on their back where it belongs and stand in solidarity with the public housing tenants to fund it. Yes. Fully fund NYCHA now. Yes. Fully fund NYCHA now. 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 We don't trust the trust. 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 All power to the people. Let's go, y'all. Power to the people. Let's go. You're looking at the nation. 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 You're our tenant association presidents from all five boroughs are here. I want to thank Joshua for union representation. I want to thank Dr. Reverend Samuels for bringing the guard on our side and standing with us and blessing yes. this mic. 
I want to thank the Isaac Holmes Coalition yes, for standing yes, out today. Yes, yes. I want to thank good old Lori Side for coming out and representing. I want to thank Sika for coming out and representing. And at a time, at a time where it's not, at a time where it is not, it is not politically popular to stand with the residents at a time when it's not, hear me, we have a slew of elected officials who are coming against us, who want this blueprint to move forward. But as I said in the beginning of this plan, the voices of the people who stand with us are louder. And so I want to thank our council members who are going against the grain. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to thank, I want to thank Chris Monte. He's still with us on these hot ass stairs all day. And this is not this is the first time he's been out here with us. He comes out here on the regular to push for public housing. I want to thank our councilwoman, Alexa Aviles, chair of the Public Housing Committee, for standing with us and being our lead advocate within the city council. And I want to thank our champions in the assembly. Assemblywoman Chantel Jackson, Assemblywoman Yulene Nu, Assemblywoman Marcella Martinez, Assemblyman Khalil Anderson, and my very own Assemblyman Harvey Epstein. And in the Senate, we have two champions as well. We have Senator Brian Kavanaugh, and we have Senator Jabari Bridgeport. So I want to thank you all, the media especially, for coming and helping to elevate our story. Some of us will hang out a little bit later. I also want to thank Senator Mike Janaris as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Janaris just got a bill passed in the Assembly, and that bill says that any time the Housing Authority doesn't give you your utility services within 24 hours, they must compensate you for that law. Mike Janaris and Khalil Anderson. So, I wrap it up here, but I ask all of you to, if you can, uh, on the steps, and if you can, in front, we need a group shot because I want to remember this moment. How do we How do we reach you? What's your contact? If you want to reach me, my name is Marquise Jenkins. Tamika Mack. Oh, yes, Ms. Tamika Mack. If you need to reach me, my name is Marquise Jenkins. You can reach me at Marquise, M-A-R, Q-U-I-S, period, J-2, at gmail.com. I'm going to say it one more time. Marquise, M-A-R-Q-U-I-S, dot J-2, at gmail.com. You can call me at 347-837-6422. Again, 347-837-6422. Thank you. All right, who's taking my shot? All right, everyone, get as close as possible. All right. You got signs up there? Oh, can you hold your Harriet? We'll be together. Like Jabba, Jabba, Jabba. Skibidi, Doobie, Bop. Jay, 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 Jay. Come on, squeeze it. Oh, sure. Thank you. Turn your point around. Don't forget to get this child included in your picture.